Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Talking Insomnia episode where I'm so, so glad to have Grace with us. Thanks for coming in, Grace. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> so uh, for those of you, uh, for those in the audience who don't know you, who's pretty much everyone, I'm sure, I, I believe that, uh, you know, you were a client of mine, actually, we worked together in bedtime, and then you sent me an email not long ago, and remind me, what, what was it you asked me about that time? Um... I had kind of had a mini, call it setback for maybe 48 hours. Um, and I really panicked when that happened. Um, but the difference was I was able to kind of remember what we had gone through and everything that I had learned from the bedtime app. And I came out of it very quickly. And honestly, I'm really happy that it, it happened because um, I think it kind of made me more, um, it helped me even more understand how all of this can manifest. Absolutely. I'm so glad you're mentioning that kind of right off the bat that how these, uh, I like to call them like speed bumps, but you know, they, they feel like a setback, but like these speed bumps, like they can teach us so much. So yeah, so glad to hear that. And then, um, uh, you know, as we were communicating by email, I was like, you know, why don't I invite Grace? So I'm so happy that you're here. So um, Take us back. Um, what uh, you know? How did it all start? Like, how did how did trouble sleeping start for you from the very beginning? Yeah. So, um, so one of my favorite things about the bedtime app was um, when you first log in. Um, it kind of said, you know, some people can be more prone to insomnia when they um, have kind of that type A personality, or they like to con they like to be in control. Um, and that's been me for my whole life. Um, I'm a very type A person, helps me be really successful in my career um, and, and my life in general. But it um, it does bring about some anxiety naturally for me. Um, and so I've always had some problems um, just with general trans big transitions in life. Um, you just being a little anxious about them, um, have maybe taking a little bit longer to get adjusted. Um and, and that can even be when I, I stay in hotel rooms. Um, throughout my life, I always kind of never had a good night's sleep in a hotel room. Never really worried about it. It was kind of just a nuisance. Um, but then last April, I had um, I had a friend come and visit me. Um, I had just moved to Boston and she was visiting me for the weekend. And it was my first time having a friend come and visit me uh, since COVID. So. I was really, really excited, really worked up about that, really wanted it to go well. And the first night, you know, I was in my bed, she was on the couch and I was so excited for the next day. And I was just up all night. I just toss and turned all night. And I remember being so frustrated by it because I was like, oh, how, you know, did I drink coffee too late? Why is this happening? Uh, it's going to ruin my day tomorrow with my friend. Um, and, you know, I, I, I was up the whole night didn't sleep a wink and then had to just go on about our day. And so that, you know, the next day I was kind of worried about it. Um, but I was like, Oh, you know, I'm going to sleep great tonight. Um, and so then that Saturday night comes and I don't sleep again. I, I stay awake the entire night again and I'm freaking out. I'm like, what is happening right now? I didn't sleep last night. I'm, I'm going on 48 hours awake. This is crazy. And I was, you know, crying in, in bed and I was, I was just so frustrated beyond belief and felt terrible the next day. Um, so things kind of went back to normal after that. I was able to, you know, kind of get back on track after that. Um, and then a week later, my, uh, my now fiance, he was my boyfriend at the time, we went to Florida and uh, just for the sake of brevity, I, I didn't sleep the first night there in our hotel and I might have slept about two to three hours per night for the five nights that we were there. Mm -hmm. And, um, it completely ruined the trip. Um, I was anxious all day. I was very anxious at night. Um, which at the time I was kind of like, well, I'm not sleeping, you know, of course I'm going to be upset about this. Um, you know, and that was so long ago, not realizing what that was doing to me, but it was just this cycle of not sleeping, getting upset about it, not sleeping, getting upset about it. Um, 
that vacation was the start of it all. And it was about a two month journey of not sleeping, averaging three hours a night, you know, staying up till the, till the sun rises, um, completely shutting down socially, taking time off of work, going to various doctors and, um, psychologists trying to figure out what was wrong with me, thinking the worst, thinking crazy. You know, I have sporadic fatal insomnia. I'd never even heard of that, but I was going online and trying to find out just what was wrong with me. Um, and truly was one of the darkest times of my life. And, you know, before I found your community um, and, and, and found out how pervasive this problem can be, you don't really know that it's common when it's happening to you. And so you already feel alone at 3 a.m., but it's also not something that you just bring up at the bar with friends. You don't just say, oh, I'm, I'm not sleeping because um, a lot of people don't haven't gone through that. Um, so, um, I, I'll stop there, but, you know, and, and let you ask questions. We can kind of talk about how I found your community and stuff, but, but yeah, it was about April to June, July. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, Grace, uh, you know, uh, I, I was actually just in my head, I was just, uh, remarking on how well you're telling the story. So, you know, you, you're telling so clearly, it's really, really helpful. And, and so, um, speaking of clarity. Again, it is it is of this year, twenty twenty one or twenty twenty. Uh, twenty twenty one. Yeah, 2021. It was this year. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. And so, yes, before we go there, um, to uh, to kind of the next step where you, we see like you started learning and, and figuring out what was happening. If we stay in this place of where this was, the intense struggle was going uh, was happening. Uh, tell us a little bit about like the things you tried to to solve it. Definitely. Um, because they all made it 10 times worse. Um, I joined online communities, um, you know, free ones like Reddit, Facebook. And that was just terrible because, um, you know, some people are on there because they are struggling with insomnia. Some people are on there because they tried a new blood pressure medication that is changing their habits or so, like everybody has a different story on there. Um, and that's also where a lot of like fear mongering happens and, and videos of people that died because they stayed awake forever and, and just kind of stuff like that, that just really plays on your fear. Um, I, um, I went to, um, a psychiatrist who immediately, um, wanted to try medications and I'm, I'm very pro medication. I, so I wasn't opposed to it, but nothing, it, it, it wasn't solving for anything. I was just trying different medications, which were just making me exhausted, groggy, um, feel sick. Um, so they just kind of made everything worse and continued to make me feel like I was incurable. Um, this was something I had to cure and these med these meds weren't doing it, which made me feel worse about myself. Um, so I tried communities, I tried meds, I went to the doctor, I got my blood work checked, it all came back normal. Um, I, I talked to my primary care and, um, you know, nobody, nobody really had an answer. Um, and um, I eventually found CBTI through, through a CBTI specialist um, before I found the bedtime app. And for those, I'm sure some people on this pod are familiar with CBTI, but um, the heart of it is this sleep restriction therapy where you, um, you limit the hours in bed and um, um, you get out of bed when you can't sleep. Um, you, you have to get, wake up every day at a certain time. And it helped a little bit. It, it did help. Um, but it, it didn't make any sense to me. It wasn't solving at the heart of it. Cause I was like, there's no way that I just struggled this badly for three months. And the answer is just, getting up every day at the same time. That that's that wasn't satisfying me. So it was definitely very much a band-aid fix for me. Um, 
but was a much healthier approach than, you know, trying all the different meds for me personally. Absolutely. You know, again, you, you, you present the story so well, Grace. And uh, did you also go down that route of like, you know, herbal teas and, uh, you know, supplements and those type of things? Oh my gosh. I was, I lived for the rituals. I tried melatonin. I tried, um, tea in the evening. Um, at the time my, um, fiance was studying for a big finance test and the, um, NBA playoffs were happening and I would lay on the couch, um, cause I had you know, envisioned in my mind that sleeping on the couch was the only thing that was going to work. Um, and he would be studying and the NBA playoffs were on. And I had to have this perfect concoction of all those things because uh, it had worked once, one time in, in this three, three months I had had, you know, fallen asleep at a decent time. Um, and, and so then I just kept trying to desperately grasp at whatever I thought was the answer. Um, and looking back, it's no wonder. It's no wonder I wasn't sleeping because I was obsessed with it. I was so obsessed with it. Um, but who doesn't want to go to sleep? I mean, you, you want it so badly. So it, it's, it's, it's just a cycle. Absolutely. Uh, that's, you, you know, and we'll get, we'll get, we'll talk more about that cycle as, as things go along here, because that is, that is it exactly what you described. And okay. So we have a clear picture of what's happening. And it, oh, actually one thing, by the way, I kind of mostly out of curiosity, but I, I think it's also you know something that we can learn from here. That first, you know, your friend was visiting uh, and you were actually excited about that, which is a little bit unusual the way that, that it starts. Usually it's somebody that's anxious or stressed about it, but you were actually just happy that your friend was gonna come. You were excited about it, which I think shows us that doesn't really matter what happens that first night or the first couple of nights when we have trouble sleeping. It's kind of our reaction to it that matters. But anyhow, what I really wanted to ask was just this, that after that sleepless night, you were supposed to, you know, have a nice day with your friend. Did you end up having a nice day with your friend that day after all, or what happened that, that, that day? So that first day, um, we, we did have a good day and, and, mainly because I've, I've had trouble sleeping before, like I said, in mm -hmm. hotel rooms and stuff. So I, um, that night we had actually, um, had these espresso martinis. So I just kind of said, Oh gosh, you know, silly me had caffeine at night. Like, you know, that kept me up all night. Um, so I was, I was annoyed and frustrated by it and I didn't feel good. And it was in the back of my mind all day. Um, but I was not panicked yet. I was just like, oh, terrible timing to, to not sleep well. It was the next day that, that the day was ruined for me. Absolutely. And actually, I'll just mention it here just so I don't forget about it. But I think, and, and I, of course, want your, you would like to hear what you think about this. But the next night, it was this idea that, oh, of course, I'm going to sleep now. I haven't slept at all the night before. And it's this expectation with probably a tinge of fear and like, but what if I don't? And then that kind of expectation, the preoccupation, the anticipation creates that hype arousal that keeps you awake for another night. And now things are different. Now it's like, oh my gosh, something is wrong. Is, is that something, something like that happened, right? That's the perfect way to describe it. Um, because I remember that third night having this these grand expectations. I have to sleep. There's no way I can't. Um, and I did eventually, but I actually didn't fall asleep until 12, 1 AM. Um, because I was just thinking about it. And every minute that passes that you're not asleep, you're more and more aware that you're not asleep. And, um, that's kind of what continued to happen every night. It was, you know, when the, when the sun set and it was, you know, dark, I would just get that. I, I could be tired all day. And then at like 6 30, 7 PM, I would get that anxious feeling in my chest and that fear that like pit in my stomach. Like, what if I'm up again all night? What if I don't sleep? Um, and which turns into just a couple hours of dread and then laying there, wide awake, fully aware that I'm not asleep, um, and just 
totally, totally aware. Um, and it's terrible. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You know, I think uh, when, when you, when you do these interviews and talk to people, sometimes it's a little like unclear exactly when sort of the, the real struggle begins, but often it is not, it is quite clear too. And that is, you know, often you can remember that moment where you thought something is wrong or this is definitely wrong. And that is in a way where the real struggle begins. But we, we let's, let's forward to, um, you know, uh, you, you tried everything, including CBTI um, and nothing really was, you know, led you to where you wanted to be. And then what happened? How did you come across my channel and what happened uh, from there? Yeah, so um, so CBTI was, I would say, at the end of a couple months of letting this go on. Um, and I would say it was the first step for me in what I consider to be dealing with this the right way. Um, not experimenting with meds, not living on the internet, um, and, and so again, CBTI helped in, in, in some ways. The, the routine was helpful for me. Um, I think more than anything, it was talking to somebody who had a good understanding of sleep um, and, and could reassure me that like, this is what he specialized in, this happens to people. Um, so I felt comforted by that. Um, and you know, again, he, he had me on this strict schedule and it, it started to work for sure. Um, I, I was feeling good about it, but it was one of those things where I would wake up relieved that I slept like, oh, yes, it worked. And so I I was still afraid of it. I was still very afraid of sleep, not knowing how, when it would come back, not knowing why this was working. And he was like, all right, well, you've you know, you passed, you did it, like you're out of the woods. And I was like, I don't know, like, how could that just happen to me? Um, so a couple of days later, I had another bad night and I went on your YouTube channel because a lot of people in like Reddit and stuff had, had recommended you. Um, and and I was kind of like, I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to take advice off Reddit. You know, I, I did the CBTI. That's the gold standard. That's that's, you know, I, I found the, the way. Um, and I watched one of your videos um, with Jim and he had left his phone number. So I actually texted him um, and I just asked him some questions. And I, I didn't even actually watch the full video with Jim because I was so panicked. I, I just found his number and I wanted to talk to him. And he was doing a great job at describing everything that was happening to me, kind of the way that your I remember he was talking about how your brain perceives sleeplessness as a threat. So your brain is doing its job by keeping you awake because it's trying to keep you safe from this threat. Um, and I was just like, wow, like this guy gets it. And I was like, where did you learn all of this? And he was like, Daniel, I, I, I got on the app. I, I signed up for the program. Um, so that was it for me. I signed up for the app right away. Um, and it didn't take long. It took like maybe seven days for me to start sleeping really good again. And I kept with it for sure. Um, but just the way that you explain what is happening in your mind I was just like, he's just nailing the heart of what I'm experiencing. And it made me, sorry, my dog's crying next to me. <laughs> um, it, it just made me feel so not alone and really understood. And that more than anything, more than getting eight hours of sleep, like that is the most powerful thing for me is knowing how normal this is, knowing my brain's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, and and learning how to have that psychological shift. And it doesn't take long. It does not take long at all. Once you realize what's happening, it's it's a pretty quick retreat into you know, your normalcy and, and getting back on track. Um, I wish I would have done it way sooner. It would have saved me a lot of time. <laughs> wow, yeah, so... Um... It's always so powerful to hear that, you know, that transformation when you see things, when, when the clarity happens, like, then everything just gets so much easier. And, and just, uh, you know, 
for anyone that hears this, you know, I just want to add a little thing because, I, of course, many of my clients they they read a, uh, like a review or something says like, oh, this person it only took them one month or two months, or, and, and and then they're like kind of frustrated. It it it, it varies, of course, but mm -hmm. I think it is true what you say that once you see things clearly and it kind of makes sense, then then you're not far away from like the end of the struggle for sure. And I think in your case, Grace, it seemed like you you know you, you had already sort of intuitively you must have understood things so that when you started the app it just kind of clicked you must have had some intuitive understanding of things or do you think so yeah so i know exactly what you're saying because um i you know when when my cbti um therapist said you know this normally takes people about four weeks i had four weeks burned in my mind. Like, all right, four weeks, like I have to beat four weeks. Um, so I don't want anybody, you know, hearing me say seven days and then it's been nine days and they're like, oh crap. Um, Cause it, it definitely doesn't work like that. Um, for me personally, um, there had to come a point where I was ready to accept what your app was telling me. And I think that if I had signed up for your app, maybe three weeks into this, I'm not sure that I would have seen that fast of results um, because I, I was still in hunting mode and trying to figure out what was going on. And I was panicked and I was anxious and I, you know, it was almost like I wanted to hear that something was really wrong. Um, and so I think after kind of the the trial and error and then having that conversation with Jim and just talking to another person and having them kind of go through what I went through, identify with my struggles and my thoughts, you know, explain, um, you know, what he learned from you, that kind of opened me up to saying like, okay, you know, his situation doesn't look exactly like mine. There's things that he, I've struggled with that he didn't have as much. There's things he struggled with that I didn't have as much, but there's a lot of things similar here. And I remember not just feeling so afraid after talking to him. Like I was like, this is horrible. This is frustrating. It's messing with my life, but I don't feel alone. I don't feel, you know, so I, I don't feel like this freak that just there's a part of me that's broken that won't sleep. So I went into the app very open minded and excited because I had already gotten a taste of it through Jim um, and I and I really identified with it. Um, and, and for some people who go straight to your app, it, it could take some more time because this is a really hard hard thing. This was the darkest time of my life when I wasn't sleeping. Um, and, and, and it just, it, it messes with you emotionally, physically, and there's a healing process there. Um, so I would encourage anybody, you, you regardless of the timeline, stick with the program, ask questions, be honest about what you're going through. Um, because it is normal. Um, you just got to be patient with yourself and allow yourself to heal um, on your timeline, but do it the right way. And and I really believe this app is the right way. Well, I'm so glad to hear these words. And and um, you know, on a just kind of a personal and a, just for the sake of sharing a little bit of like storytelling or whatnot here, like uh, it is kind of amazing for me, honestly, to hear how I. You know, Jim, because I, I remember Jim being my client in the app, right? I remember him and how he struggled. And then I remember asking him if he wanted to be a guest and him saying yes. And then just learning that he left his phone number there and you called him. It's just amazing how this, uh, you know, how things are connected that I, I had no idea about. So, yeah, I'm so glad he left his phone number and you connected with him. So just wanted to share that, you know, feels really special to hear that, uh, that, that you know, that backstory there. And um, now, one thing I was thinking about here was uh, how for someone like yourself and myself, and many of us who are like, you know, we are goal oriented and things like that, it, it, it can be very tricky to learn that the way we approach almost anything in life, uh, uh, you know, is, is like totally backfires when it comes to like sleep and our emotional landscape and things of that nature. And like, 
was that something that I guess my question to you is like when you started seeing that, did you see how what you learned from the struggle with sleep could help in other areas of life as well? That's a good question. Um, the The short answer is yes. Um, you know, at the at the end of the day, I don't I don't think about sleep at all anymore. Um, it, I can't even say like, oh, I just I put less effort into it. I don't put any effort into it. I don't think about it anymore. Um, and again, that's um, you know, I work I work for a tech company. Um, I'm I I consider myself a problem solver. I consider myself a go getter. I've been an athlete all my life. Um, so putting in a lot of effort into everything I do is kind of the nature of my life. Everybody would call me the type A person, the perfectionist. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a textbook, you know, case for that. Um, and so, you know, I don't know if I, if I approach things differently because of this, but I will say that, um, it taught me just a lot about how powerful my mind is. Um, and, and same with my fiance. He's, he, you know, we're both just kind of amazed at what the human mind can do and is capable of. Um, and, and, and so, you know, when I'm having moments when I'm feeling very anxious about something, um, I do kind of have those checks now with myself that I'm like, is, is this problem or this situation as grand as it is in my mind? Probably not. Um, and, and that was kind of the whole theme of, of the insomnia. Um, what was happening in my mind, you know, not just, you know, at 3 a.m. when I wasn't sleeping, but during the day, I thought about it all day. I was truly obsessed with sleep. Um, and, and I, I never, until I found your app, like I, I never kind of thought to zoom out and like look at my mind from the bird's eye view, like watching what my mind was doing and controlling. I was just living in it and immersed in it and completely blind to any sort of logic. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I, I got to check yourself from time to time, make sure you're okay. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it, it's not, it's, it's sounds so wise what you were saying there. And um, I guess um, just maybe one or two more things here. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of trying to think of more questions because you, you give such great answers, but one of them becomes like, what we talked about in the beginning, which was this kind of cycle where you, we mentioned that um, you wouldn't sleep, then you would be upset at yourself and, and start kind of problem solving. And then you wouldn't sleep because of that. And then you would be upset at yourself, which leads me to this, um, kind of, uh, I don't know, aspect or area, which I don't know if I, I talk so much about when we work together, but it becomes, uh, uh, you know, a teaching about like not being so hard on yourself and being more kind to yourself. And because that when you're upset at yourself for not sleeping, it's kind of ridiculous in a way, or it doesn't make sense, I should say, because we can't control it. So why are we so hard on ourselves for something that we can't control, which leads to like kind of being gentler and kinder to ourselves. And that can be, to me, often that when we're not so upset at ourselves, that leads to kind of less of a struggle, which leads to sleeping easier, which kind of reverses the cycle. But does, does that resonate with you? What do you think of that? Yeah, it, it does. Um, I can't tell you how many times I said, what's wrong with me? Why can't I sleep? Why can't I do this? Um, it was something that I couldn't accomplish. I couldn't reach it. And that was really frustrating because everybody can sleep. Babies can sleep. Toddlers can sleep. People, you know, that are 90 years old can sleep. Oh, I'm sorry. My dog got a shot at the vet and it's, <laughs> she's sore. Um, so, so that was just incredibly frustrating. Um, and uh, there was something in, um, something I remember in, in the, in the bedtime app um, that kind of helped me shift out of that mode of anger and pure frustration. And that was just doing what you like to do when you're awake. Um, and, and that can be, you know, at first when you said that, like, I didn't like it at all because I was like, you know what? It's midnight. I don't want to be reading a book. I want to be asleep. 
I can't focus on reading the book. I'm focused on wanting to be asleep. And that's kind of what I'm talking about when I say being ready to accept the, the learnings in the bedtime app and being ready to not just do the actions. If you're reading a book, but in the back of your mind, you're like, I wish I was asleep. It's not going to work. I did it a hundred nights. Um, but when I was going through the app and I was ready to actually take what, you know, Jim had learned and all these people had successfully learned, um, I started watching a new TV show that I really, really liked. And I remember I was watching an episode. The next thing I knew it was 8 a.m. And I had gone through all the episodes. I'd slept through all the episodes because um, I, I just kind of resigned to it. I was like, you know what? If I'm going to be up like this show looks good. Um, and so you know, that kind of took away the anger because um, I was like, well, I can't be angry if I'm enjoying this show. Uh, but but I definitely went through that. I definitely went through the anger at yourself. And, and, you know, once you, again, go through the bedtime app and learn that so much of this is normal human behavior, um, you won't feel that anger. You'll just feel understood. Wow, music to my ears. I, I think uh, this was this was fantastic. You, you shared so many helpful things here, Grace. And I think I just have one more question, which has, this has become my standard last question here, which is um, if you could say something to yourself uh, when you were, you know, in the midst of the struggle here, what, uh, what would you tell yourself? I would tell myself, you're okay. You're, you're normal. You're, you're a normal human being and we are complex individuals. And, you know, what makes me so great as a person is, you know, my ability to work really hard and be a perfectionist and want to do well and want to understand situations and be successful in them. And that led to this insomnia spiraling out of control because I wanted to understand it. I wanted to beat it. I wanted to triumph over it. Um, and and I, I, I could not understand what was happening to me. I lost that control that I gain or that I pursue in so many parts of my life. Um, so I would just tell myself that all of this is normal. You're okay. There's more of you out there. You just don't know they're out there at three in the morning when you're by yourself. Um, and I think that would have gone a long way for me. 100% agree. Uh, I think it would have helped you so much. And now uh, I'm sure it's gonna help so many other people that will tune into this. So um, yeah, I just wanna say Grace, it was um, so nice uh, having you here. And I just wanna thank you again for, for, for sharing this. Yeah, thank you for having me. And, and thank you for, for all that you're doing. Uh, for us insomniacs. Just kidding. We're not insomniacs. Exactly. <laughs> well said. We'll end there. Thanks so much again, Grace. Bye now. Yep.